Well, hello there, woman beings, and hello. welcome back to hello. another episode <laughs> of the Woman Being Podcast. Um, today we're going to try something a little different, so grab a seat, have a sit, and enjoy a little ex-purity culture recovery story time, and we're just going to dive right in. This is Woman Being where we explore thoughts and opinions and have the freedom to change our minds without expectation or judgment. We will hold a safe space and support each other as we navigate together in the form of feminine. All right, guys. So we are trying something a little different today. Yes, Yes. we are. And it is I dug up a treasure of a book. A treasure. That I have from back in the day when I was steeped in good Christian girldom and purity culture. And it is a book called Stay in the Castle. So we're going to try something a little different. We are going to, well, we, I, Kellyanne, am going to read this book that is Dumpster Fire to my beautiful friends. <laughs> yes. We have not heard this book. Kelly and Emma, this is a blind reaction yeah. on their end. Mm-hmm. Yes. But before we get started, I want to know from you two, what kind of purity culture books did you consume when you were younger or first coming to Christianity or navigating your sexual desires and development as a teenager or young person? I'm curious to know. Well, I guess Dating Goodbye is a classic. The classic, iconic. iconic. Um, also, I don't remember the name of it, but there is a book that is a like of a Christian woman who interviewed a bunch of men mm. and asked them their opinion about certain things. Interesting. And like it's basically just sort of like a book that reinforces all of the male dominated like your husband wants you to dress nice and he doesn't want you to be fat and he, you know, like Gross. Yeah. So it was like all sorts of like. It was like this is how to be a good it was like, wife. It was like mm. this is this is questions about makeup and sex and blah 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 and from the male perspective as if we didn't have <laughs> enough of their perspective on this topic. As if it was you know, a question. We yeah. really need to just let the men speak Honestly, up. The men don't have enough of a platform. We haven't yeah. really heard from the men. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing. So you no, know, I've been saying this for years. I remember <laughs> reading that book and being like, oh my gosh, men are so distracted by my boobs i'll have to wear modest clothing and yeah. you know, stuff oh, like that gosh. so that mm. was ugh. It, it wasn't even like enforced upon me it was like a friend read it and she was like actually you should probably read this like it's <gasps> oh was she no. like oh you should probably no, read this no, no. it was like i was like this stuff is stupid and she was like well actually i read this book and it lets men share what they actually feel and you mm. should hear it i don't know yeah mm. well, yeah Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also read the classic I Kiss Dating Goodbye by Mr. Joshua Harris. Shout um, out. Joshua Harris, come on our podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I also read his sequel, uh, Say Hello to Courtship. Yes. Which was about him courting his wife. Yes. Um, who is no longer his wife. Ooh. And yes, it uh, didn't work out. That yeah, the courtship didn't the courtship work. Courtship didn't hold up. Uh, <laughs> but I read both of those. Uh, one, for, I was sitting goodbye. I was part of like a d- Bible study group that my church did for women. And then I say hello to courtship was on my own accord. I chose to read that because Aww, it was the good sequel, for you. and I was a good gal. Yeah. So. Um, Besides those books, I actually didn't read anything else that had to do with purity culture specifically. Mm -hmm. I did go to a lot of Christian conferences in Mm -hmm. high school, and there were, like, periodic messages about purity and that kind of thing. But it wasn't, like, a purity conference or anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one other one I remembered is Ross and I read a book called Sacred Marriage Mm -hmm. prior to getting married. That Mm -hmm. was, like, all about, like, the sanctity of sex and how, like— how special it how is. How special it is and, like, how sex is an act of worship. And- oh, oh, that's, mm. like, my least favorite thing yeah. that people say. You're worshiping God. Oh, I'm like, listen. If you're married in a monogamous, heterosexual <laughs> relationship, yes. Um, I'm like, yeah, that's nice that you think that, but that is so weird mm. to, like, think about. And I'm like, I actually don't think it's that weird. Really? 
But I also think everything that you do is worship. Well, yes. I am of that camp. So, but I'm very of the everything is divine type Mm, of mindset. mm -hmm, So if mm -hmm. everything is divine, then of course that's worship. And what we're doing right now is also worship and like everything. I don't know. For some reason, maybe I just follow too many comedians that make fun of this idea, (laughs) which is entirely possible. Uh, But I'm just like, oh, like that gives the idea that like, oh, this is worship. Like we are worshiping God. Therefore, God's watching. I'm just Mm. like, I can't get nasty and freaky. With that idea in the back of my head. <laughs> but is it nasty and freaky because it's nasty and freaky or because that's what culture – like, it's like a weird culture clash of, like, mm. religion and – That's true. And, like, society that comes together where it's, like, sex is not nasty or gross. But then sure. associating it with God yeah. has this sort of cringe factor. Sure. Which yeah. implies that it is – I'm just saying I like to enjoy getting nasty and freaky at times. I mean, that's all. That is all. That is good. That is all. But um, no, yeah, I think we probably all have had great um, opportunities to read dumpster fire things that have not served us post deconstruction, reconstruction, and where we find ourselves now in life. So I found this in, get this, my treasure chest. Your what? Yeah, you heard that right. What? I have. What is a treasure chest? I'm so scared to know I'm the like, answer this. I feel like that's a metaphor for a vagina. Yeah, I'm like, I just pulled this out of my vagina. Um, <laughs> She's been hiding in there for I've years. I've been keeping it. Next it. To her this was ring. my birth yeah. control. Oh, God. Just uh, kept it up there. Oh. Um, anyway, so I, long story short, I, when I was 11, in a Sunday school class, we all wrote purity letters to our future husbands. Eleven? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they That's started so me young. young. They started me young. And of course, at that point, I was just terrified about sex. So I'm like, yeah, I'm never having sex. Oh. Ever. Ever. Yeah. I mean, all of us were like, we were like, don't have sex before you're married. And we're all like 10 years old. Like, like okay. Uh, what, like, what, what is, is that? Sex? <laughs> that sounds good. And so I wrote this letter to my future husband And as we all did in that class, committing ourselves to waiting until we we were married with that first future husband. Mm. And of course, over the years, I kept writing letters to my future husband and kept them all in a treasure chest that I gave to James on my wedding night. (laughs) How many letters? Oh, like 50. Wow. Yeah. Has he read all of them? 50 has read all of them. And at that point, I mean you I was like 22, so I was like, obviously, I got to go through with this, right? I've yeah, been yeah. writing letters my whole <laughs> life to totally. 50. There's like a lot of letters in there, and they're dated. How do you have that much to say to a person that you don't even know yet? Oh, I found plenty. But I was also like, condi- like this was the good Christian girl thing to do. That's like, so sweet and so cringy it's at the same time. It's very cringy. But like, that's so sweet, though. I know. It's very cringy. Is it? It is. <laughs> I mean, she like wrote all these things and then kept them for him. And she didn't know him yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, of course, like, I also maybe a little creepy. kept important <laughs> things in there, too. Like this book, which is called Stay in the Castle. What is the which ca- is, I don't want to know what the castle is. It's a metaphor, uh, which we'll is learn. the story of one teenager's decision to dot, dot, dot. <gasps> decision Ooh. to not to. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, in Mamma Mia, dot, 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 dot means dot. something else. <laughs> um, so this is by Pastor Jerry Ross, whom at the time was the assistant pastor of the Blessed Hope Baptist Church in Jasonville, Indiana. Wow, he sounds super qualified. What he's up to now, I don't know. He actually has a lot of other books very similar to this. To those listening, this is a stapled together paperback book with very cheap artwork on top and very or on the cover. Christian font. It's like, yeah, very Christian. What it's is that like, font? I swear that is the Christian font. That's probably the Christian font. I didn't font. know there was a Christian like font. A, There's not a Christian font, but it looks like it's like the font that gets it's used like, in all Christian oh, literature. 24 pages. This. So it's nothing crazy. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of jump around a little bit so we're not sitting through an entire story, but um, the back has 
But ye are chosen, a chosen generation of royal priesthood. First Peter 2 9. Wait, what does the back say? Stay in the castle is the story of a young lady who finds herself at a crossroad. A crossroads. One road is marked my will, the other, God's, God's will. will. <laughs> it's a love story. A story of misplaced love, lost love, and genuine love realized. realized. Ooh, but best of all, Stay in the Castle is a true story. Oh, anyway. What? So It's a true story? Apparently. I thought it was like a fairy tale. Oh, so this was actually uh, published originally in 1998. And it has had three printings, according to my copy, which is very old. I got this from a mentor when I was, like, 12. <laughs> what were you, like, eight? Yeah. I was, like, 12. This yeah. is, like, a, a, a storybook, essentially. Um, anyway, so I'm going to – I'm just going to start reading. And then, obviously, we'll stop and react and give our thoughts. Great. And uh, I will probably pause every few seconds. <laughs> I'm ready. So stay in the castle. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a princess that lived in a beautiful place overlooking a simple but worldly village. Just going to start there. Simple and worldly like it's a bad thing? Like, what? She lived in a castle with her father, the king, and a handful of faithful servants. Love those. Her father doted over her, supplying her every need and most of all, her wants. Over the years, she blossomed into a beautiful teenage girl, quick-witted, full of laughter, and always, very important, obedient, but increasingly lonely. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hate what that. is she going to do? What's she going to do? Does she have a name? No. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Why would she have a name, Emma? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what her name is. Yeah, she's the princess. I want to point out that this has so far not passed the Bechdel test. So far, yeah. (laughs) Which is a very low bar. (laughs) And I very much don't expect it to. It will not. Uh, Often, late at night, she would gaze from her window of her room, high in the castle wall, watching the people far away in the streets below. She would lean towards the gaiety, straining past the sounds of music and laughter to try and pick out the words of the young people. So she's just like... like, Did anyone else think when they said that she spends her nights in her room, I thought it was going to end with masturbating? (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, it would have been good for her. It would have. It would have been a good option. She spends her lonely nights in her room Mm -hmm. getting herself off. Wishing that her loving father who gives her everything she wants and needs would take her on a trip to the simple worldly village. Simple worldly village. Oh, goodness. No sad, lonely sounds ever reached her her ears, and she began to believe that they must be the happiest people in the kingdom. I'm like, yeah, probably if they're having parties all night, they're having a great time. Yeah. And I'm like, these simple worldly people kind of figured it out. Father, she asked one evening as they worked together on what he called her preparation. What? Ah! Preparation. Her preparation. Her preparation. Like what? Yeah. Her brainwashing? Yeah. You yes. mean? Yes. Her grooming? Her (laughs) trafficking to marriage? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it gets better because she doesn't know yet, so. Okay. Oh, good. She doesn't know that she's being trafficked. She doesn't know that she's being groomed. I mean, we don't know. I don't know. Who knows what her preparation is for? We'll we'll see. Well, we'll find out. Sounds like she's about to get murdered. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's plumping her up. (laughs) Yeah, just getting her ready. (laughs) Do you think that perhaps I might one evening be allowed to attend one of the festivals at the village, perhaps just for a short time? The old but wise king laid aside the book of lessons and looked upon his daughter with compassion and concern. My child, the village below is a worldly place full of sad people. The sound of merriment that you sometimes hear is their attempt to drown out the emptiness and despair of their lives, and it is best that you stay in the castle. Okay. Okay. Isn't that so bad? 
I'm sensing some heavy propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a few things that are standing out mm-hmm, to me already. Mm-hmm. Number one, this weird classist idea of Very the classist. perfect virgin daughter who lives in a wealthy castle with her wealthy father who provides everything she wants and needs and loves who her doesn't unconditionally. doesn't have any friends. And I'm like, yeah. this is a very idealized version of what a father is like. I understand that he's probably representative of her, of God. Yeah. But like, let's be honest. Like, who among us is living in a castle? Nope. So that to me is already an issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then this this... Very condescending, patronizing view of the poor people, people that essentially aren't living like, like them. Yeah, like that is a horrible way to look at non Christians. Yes. Essentially, yeah. well, even I also so my first thought is that there's even like a race aspect with that because the way that we like Western colonizers like treated people who didn't act the way that they did Mm. was like because it was other and so they condemned those things which is part of why there's so much protestantism that condemns things like dancing Mm -hmm. and merriment because those things were associated with indigenous people that they encountered and so like there's even like that aspect when it's not just class but like i think it's all links yeah Yeah. it's white class high class Society. A hundred percent, yeah. Hmm. Though she loved her father, it was not the answer she wished, obviously. But father, how will I ever meet, I mean, someday I would like to. Oh, father, you are so good to me, and I do so love it here, but sometimes I get so lonely. Is she, like, stumbling over her words? Yes. Is that the, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, she's like, I'm, gonna, uh, uh, da, 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 da. I'm so grateful to you. I'm like, brainwashed. Ugh. Okay, so she can't actually express her needs and wants mm-hmm. with her mm-hmm. own father. Interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not a safe place. Nope. The king sat back in his chair, his eyes suddenly seeing his daughter, not as a little girl she would always be to him, but as a young lady that she was becoming. He then decided, it's time that I tell you. Tell me what, father? Standing to his feet, he walked to the window overlooking the countryside to the east. His eyes fastened onto the King's Highway, a straight road that passed high above the village and led to the castle gate. What, the straight and narrow road? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Above the village. Mm -hmm. Much better Mm -hmm. than those people, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um... Shortly after you were born, I foresaw the day when you would need someone special, someone with whom to spend your life. I set out to search, to visit other castles in the kingdom, to find a prince for you, not just anyone, but that special someone. When she was a, when you were born, so when she was an infant. Was this prince also a baby? (laughs) That's what I'm trying to figure out. I hope so. I hope so, but it doesn't say. But how did he pick them based off of being a baby? It actually doesn't say. (laughs) Or it's some old guy that she's going to get married off to, which is also possible. Remember, everyone, this is a true story. Very true. True story. Ah, Super true. Don't forget. I don't. This is not a true story. Definitely not. They should have said based on a true story. Yeah. Inspired by true events. Cinderella. Like, the true story of some father who is concerned about his daughter. Yeah. No. Yeah. The king turned to look at his princess, her eyes full of wonderment. Wow, daddy. I have met him. Say wow, daddy? No, that's my, sorry, that's my commentary. I was like, this one may turn a very different way. Yeah. I'm like, daddy. Daddy. Ooh. It's that kind of book. Um, I have met him. I know who he is. Ooh. Oh, Father, where does he live? When do I get to meet him? He lives far away, but not so far. Okay. In a castle, not unlike this one. He, too, is being prepared as you are, both for the other. Come sit beside me, my child. She walked to where her father stood by the window. See there? That's the king's highway. 
Like, she didn't know, like, the highway. Like, it's like, it's like, she had never... For the first time, time, no. She spends every night masturbating out the window. Obviously. She knows. <laughs> She's so lonely. <laughs> She's seen the highway. <laughs> <laughs> when the time is right and not before... Okay. He will come on a white steed and you will know him. Is, is this man Jesus? Apparently. Is there no, actually, no, she doesn't get to ever marry? She just, <laughs> she just gets Jesus. She just marries Jesus. God and moves on? I don't know. Or he's, you know what really it is? Ooh. Mm. So I bet that really he's just being, like, metaphorically compared to Jesus because obviously a man is the savior of a woman and she needs him in order to be complete. Mm -hmm. And he is her provider. He is her protector. He is her life. He and is so, all that she needs. Yes. And so, yes, of course he's being riding in on a white horse just like Jesus. Because, yeah. like, she is being set up to serve him mm -hmm. for the rest of her life. That is her preparation. Mm -hmm. Then taking her hands into his, he looked into her tear-brimmed eyes. She's like, I'm so lonely. Send anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Princess. Please, dear God, please. Please. I'm tired of masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Princess, never forget you are a child of the king. You are royalty. The one being prepared for you is also of royal descent. Be, be, be patient. <laughs> be patient, prepare, and stay in the castle. Mm. He hugged the she hugged the king. Jumped into his arms, happy now and determined to prepare and wait. For many months, at night, she looked out her bedroom window past the village. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds to the highway above. Watching and dreaming of the one who one day would come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just stay. Here in this singular place, and don't learn anything about the world. And yeah. or never explore, go anywhere. Or be curious, or make any friends. Also, like your husband this... is waiting for you, and, and he, he'll come. He will provide all of your needs, and that is all you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no because more companionship she, other than that. No, nope. she can't provide for herself. She has to either have a father who provides for everything she needs, Clearly. or a husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She has no way to independently provide for herself. And it seems that her father has access to the rest of the wide world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How does her father know about the worldly city? Has exactly. he been there? Exactly. Yeah. The, the worldly city that he's supposed to be the king of. Exactly. If he's the king of the city, why is it so Yeah, shouldn't he be proud of this city? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gross. Like, does he just, like, Ew. not do anything for his people, his mm -hmm. kingdom? Mm -hmm. Is he just like, oh, they're, they're defiled people. They're just debaucherous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically. Okay. okay. So I'm going to cool. do a little synopsis of the next little section. Of the book. And basically, it's like a few years later, like she's having a hard time. She's getting lonely years. again. Years of masturbating yeah. alone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's so lonely. <laughs> and one day, she's down in the kitchens and a uh, delivery knocks on the back door and there's no servants to answer it. So she's like, I guess I will answer. And opens the door, and a very cute delivery boy is there. Ooh, I a know. saucy romance. <laughs> so he comes in, and he's like, ooh, you're pretty. And she's like, ah, I'm not a servant. I'm a princess. <laughs> and he, they sit and talk for several hours. And he's like, well, talk. talk. Wink. She's been masturbating a lot of time, guys. <laughs> Talking. <laughs> they had a little, little talk. talk. For those who are listening, we're winking a lot. <laughs> and essentially, he's like, well, you want to come to uh, the thingy thing tonight? Festival? The festival? And she's like, oh, I can't. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, he's asking her on a date. And he's like, you can do whatever you want. And she's like, well, I guess I could, like, sneak out. <laughs> and so she sneaks out. <gasps> yes! And goes and has a little pate. Yes, <gasps> princess. Uh -huh. Get out of there. So she goes out and goes to the party. Mm-hmm. For the first time. And, and, and has a great time. That's the end of that section. Okay. Just says, 
Uh, the last paragraph says, two hours later, when it was believed that all the castle were sleeping, the f- young figure stole out the kitchen door and disappeared into the night. Into the night. Ooh. 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 So I'm assuming she went to a rager and had a great time. <laughs> so next section. She experienced the world for the first time. The first time. Good for you, girl. Yeah. I'm like, get out of for there. For the first time in forever. Oh, exactly. Oh, that's it. There you go. That was her. Uh-huh. You go. That was her. Mm-hmm. So keep in mind, we also have no idea how old this girl is. Like, it, it's not specified. It's so. been a few years. It's been a few years. Um, so she's older, she's older than she was. She's she knows. Older. She actually knows how to masturbate at this point. Yeah, she, she is a professional. <laughs> she's got this on lockdown, guys. <laughs> she's like, I don't even need a man. Just give me point. a glimpse of that King's Highway <laughs> and it's done. She's like, I got all this <laughs> King's <laughs> Highway just does it for does her. Does it. <laughs> So, okay. So, three months later, I hate this, a slightly older but much changed princess marched into the great room to announce to her father the decision she had made on the previous night. So, this idea of, like, she has left the castle and been in a quote-unquote worldly space, she's much, or she's slightly older and she's much changed. Like, it's, like, impacted her so much, which is... It's spun as a negative thing mm-hmm. in Christian yeah. culture, but I actually see this as a positive thing. Right. I'm like, actually, you need to be more well rounded. You're supposed to change. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and being exposed to new things, people, and experiences yeah. does change. Yeah. yeah, but also like being exposed to new experience and things like doesn't change you. No, you know sure. what I mean. Like you are not inherently changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you do change. You yes. know what I mean? Because yeah. I think that's one of the main sort of communications about purity culture and about not having sex before marriage is this idea that if you do like you become one thing you go Mm. from being one thing and become another thing and you go from being a pure thing to a defiled thing or like a clean thing to a tainted thing Mm -hmm. but it's actually like your resilience as a human and like who you are is so much more like concrete Mm -hmm. than like a sexual encounter Mm -hmm. can have in your life and that's that's the that's where it's like bothering. That's like mm. the the bristle, yeah, of that sort of statement. Yeah, and I think too, like within purity culture in general, it's limitation of exposure, right? Don't listen to the bad music. Don't watch the bad movies. Right. Don't dress the certain yeah, way because you right. might be exposed to a certain interaction. Like, don't cuss. It's essentially like trying to keep yourself as childlike as possible, mm-hmm. but you're actually not like growing up. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I think with that, you're not able to just like mature as a person Mm -hmm. yeah like you're sort of Mm self-stunting and you're not able to truly like figure out how to function as a human in the world yeah or at least you're delaying that yeah or even have relationships yeah like like how do you like approach relationships if you're just like keeping yourself sealed off from people Mm -hmm. yeah Anyway, I take great issue. Mm -hmm. Um, Her midnight visits had increased in frequency since that first visit a lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. The village nightlife was more exciting than she had ever dared imagine. The people, though sometimes crude, again, like it's a bad thing, Uh laughed and sang and danced and chased each night into dawn. They were living, living now, not just waiting for a dream that might never come true. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's very good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that I'm is sorry. a positive thing. Let's not act like that is a bad way to live your life. Yes. Thank you. Yes. The young man that had met her that first night had treated her well, like royalty. In a hundred ways, he had made her feel special. Then last night, the greatest of all nights of her life, he had proposed to her. She clutched the ring he had slipped onto her finger tightly in her palm, drawing courage from the pain it produced. Which, first of all, that is not a good line. But I- also, like, the fact that this woman mm-hmm. is so terrified to tell her father she's in love with somebody and that she is been proposed to that she needs to clutch the ring and bring herself pain as like a motivator Mm -hmm. to speak to him Mm -hmm. that is like awful that Mm -hmm. is an awful home life Mm -hmm. what's that is like abusive yep i'm trying to be like what's about to happen here though is he gonna be like no this isn't your prince 
We're gonna find We're out. Because I'm out. like, I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm like, if this isn't her prince, I'm like, that that that's another issue that we experience in the church all the time. Is like these girls mm-hmm. or men feeling like, or sorry, women or men feeling like, oh well, they're beneath me because they're not the prince that I deserve. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, that happens a lot. Which, by the way. He's treating her so it's well. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. I just heard that you have someone who's attentive to your needs, appreciates you, and treats you like has fun. And that you are the yeah. happiest you've ever been in your life. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. this sounds like a pretty good suitor. Like you're to not me. masturbating yeah. by like yourself anymore. This sounds anymore. like exactly yeah. what a princess needs in her life. Yes, sounds okay. like a guy who will take the time I'm to like, make sure that he, you have okay, a good time. So like, either the king's gonna be like, no, you need to stop this right now, shut it down, or. He's going to be like, surprise, this was your prince. Here oh, he is. Yeah. Tricked ya. Like, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> like I feel like it's going to be a lot of I'm too. just like, what is going to happen? Yeah. <sighs> I would like to say that this book is why it took me so long to get married. <laughs> and I won't say any more until we read on. All right. Okay. Father, I have something to tell you. <laughs> he sat in his chair, the book of lessons on his lap. It's pages freshly stained with tears. She almost lost her resolve. I have met a young man. I know I shouldn't have gone out without your permission. But anyway, we're going to be married right away. The king shut the book and stared out towards the highway. I watched you go each night wishing you back. Then turning his eyes to her and through her, End of sentence. Badly written. In ter- turning his what? turning his eyes to her and through her. Turning He's his eyes through her to her and through her. He's looking through her as if she's nothing. You I know, don't understand. Uh, Pastor Jerry Ross. Is he? Is this supposed <laughs> to mean he's seeing Pastor Jerry Ross into Pastor. her soul? Yes, I think that's the intent. I don't think he's using the right he's words. Like, I see no, right no. through you. Yeah, I, I'm like I see you. <laughs> uh, this castle has never been a prison. Oh, incorrect. Incorrect. Yeah. No, no. Ah, no, no. You're wrong, Not sir. Not true. Very You're much wrong, a prison. Sir. You said, no, no, don't go associate with those village people. Not just yeah. that. He said, stay in the castle. Stay meaning, here. Do not leave here. Meaning prison. Yep. Okay. Just clarifying. This castle is a decision. No, it wasn't. As we just covered. Yeah, I know. This castle was your decision. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't decide this. She was brainwashed into it. Yeah. From the start. Her yeah. father forced her to stay in it. I yeah. mean, technically, if we want to be technical, he didn't force her in sure. terms of like physical force. Forbid her. But he didn't tell her. He told her, her not to. He didn't right? tell her she had any other option. Yes. But also he said he watched her leave every night. So he knew she was leaving That's and true. did not force her to stay. He I also... let her go, theoretically. <laughs> But it's still, like, he still was, for her entire life, manipulating her into thinking that this was the Mm. only place that she could be at. Yeah. And so she wasn't deciding. Mm -hmm. She decided when she decided to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But he didn't stop her from leaving. It's true. The only stopping he did was years and years of, like, force-feeding her with all of these ideas. And lessons and preparations. preparations. And I think this is so interesting, too. Like, the idealized, like, father in Christian culture of, like, every girl, I think, not only is dreaming of a husband one day, but also wanting a unreal relationship with their actual father mm. of, like, I want you to watch me make my decisions and not stop me and then cry into a book. Like, mm. it's just, like, what the hell? Like... It's just not very, it's not realistic. This castle. Which also makes people feel like their, like, parents are not sufficient. Yes. In a lot of ways. Like, I experienced that a lot with, like, being around Christians and Christian parents and Mm -hmm. not having Christian parents. And it was like, oh, my parents are doing something wrong Mm -hmm. because of that. Or I even imagined, like, if a guy that I was dating were to one day ask my dad if I could marry him, Mm -hmm. my dad would have been, like, 
what? <laughs> like, like, why are you No one cares. Me? Or not, no, no one cares, cares, but he would just but, like, be like, that's not my decision. Like, that's yeah. my decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my dad would 100% do that. My dad gets mad when he watches Say Yes to the Dress and the moms are controlling about a bride's dress. <laughs> I love that your so, dad watches Say Yes to the Dress. With me. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. So, anyways, I'm just like, there's so much, like, toxicity in there that mm-hmm. that builds in people who are reading this book and being exposed to it. 100%, because then that's... Yeah. Anyway, so this castle was never a prison. This castle is a decision. Hmm. I want you to know that if you leave here, things will never be the same again. Never again? Never again. Okay. My love for you will never change, but everything, everything else will. She Two waved everythings. Two everythings. Well, like dash everything, dash. It was like, okay. Wow. She wavered for a moment. Obviously, that's terrifying. (laughs) But only for a moment. So she really liked this guy. Her head filled now with the village ideas. Like the village brainwashed her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that this is what is right for me. He may not be royalty, but I love him. And with that, she left the castle. Good for you, girl. I'm like... And Listen. that's where the book ends. Listen. The end. <laughs> <laughs> a girl figured out how to advocate for herself. You guys, this is the Wolf Being Podcast. You can follow us on all your platforms. <laughs> and that's the end of the episode. Thank you and good night. <laughs> so there is a, another section. Oh, damn it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. The fourth section of this book. And last. And last. There is oh, an epilogue, right. which... I've honestly, oh, thank goodness. I've never read. I was so worried there so, wouldn't be an epilogue. <laughs> I mean, same. <laughs> same. Uh, okay. She woke with the dawn, not knowing that it was a year to the day since her departure. Her back hurt. Just part of being in your last month of pregnancy. So she pregnant. She oh, pregnant. She pregnant. I know. This is like a good thing. She's growing a human. She's growing a human. She's married someone that she loves. Like, this is a good he thing. He treats her like royalty. He treats her like royalty. I'm scared he's going to take a turn. It's going to be like, surprise, he's awful because he's not a king. <laughs> anyway, it's almost exactly what's going to happen. So, um, last month of pregnancy, the village women had told her. Rising with difficulty, yeah, bitch, because you pregnant. <laughs> you real pregnant. Yeah. Her husband muttered something in his half-drunken state. So half-drunken. Uh, so they they made it. Here's how I read this as a teenager. It's like, if I don't marry a prince, I'm going to be bamboozled by someone. Yeah, I'm going to get yeah. married and they're going to suddenly be an alcoholic. They're going to treat me like mm. a princess and give me everything I think I want beforehand. And then afterhand, they're going to beat me. I don't know. There's yeah. no in between. Uh, like, yeah. that was my... That is awful. That was my mentality. No, that, that is the mentality. Yeah. That's what you were told. It's like, he may be nice now. But just wait till he gets what he wants, which is sex. Mm. Yeah. And you're just like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. people get sex and then they turn into monsters? 100%. I don't think so. So he had come home only hours before and they had argued again. Mm. Oh, no, because people in marriages don't ever argue when yeah. they marry each other. We don't have fights. <laughs> if you'd stayed in the castle, you wouldn't have had a fight. Oh, if you would have married that prince that your dad had prepared for you, you guys would never fight. Yeah. So sad. Probably because they would have nothing to talk about because they don't <laughs> even know each other. <laughs> <laughs> Can't fight with someone you don't know. Literally. Literally. And the uh. castle's big enough where you can just avoid each other. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's real helpful. That's oh. healthy. Oh, well. After the baby is born, maybe things will get better. Mm, classic. Ah, so classic. There was still a house to clean and chores to do. Picking up a worn straw broom, she walked outside to sweep the front porch because that's the top of the house to do <laughs> list. <laughs> like, let me just get the dust off my front porch <laughs> with this worn straw broom. <laughs> Their house was small. It sat at the edge of town, not far from the bridge where she had waited for her, well, whoa, 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 where he had waited for her that first night. Her eyes followed the path up to her father's castle. The king had still found little ways to show her that he had not forgotten her, that she was still loved. 
But what he has said was now true. Nothing was the same. I'm like, what ways is he helping you feel loved? Yeah, what has he done? What is he, in my brain, as a young child Mm -hmm. reading this, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe he put the banners up as her favorite color or, (laughs) like, had special flowers put out around the village. Like, (laughs) I don't know. I was just like, she obviously can't go back, which the the idea of that is insanity. The idea that you're going to the village and now you can't come home. Yeah, Yeah, that's horrible. Also, what the hell is dad doing? Like, why is he not involved in this marriage? Why is he not, like, helping them? Like, why has he not funded them a house? Why hasn't he he moved into the the castle? castle. Yeah, like, we're... What? No, no, everything's changing. Can't oh come back gosh. to a castle. Yeah. That's, yeah. That is not love. That's no, abandoning it's not. your yes, child. Exactly. Yeah, because that's actually punishing your child that is for punishment. making a different decision than, you than what you to. think. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. It's ridiculous. So Ridic. nothing was the same. And it's also saying if you make the wrong decision and don't follow God's plan, you'll be poor. Oh, you'll be, <laughs> you'll be ostracized. Yeah. You'll be cut off. Mm-hmm. But he still loves you because there was a rainbow in the sky this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Her eyes wandered to the east to spend a few minutes watching the sunrise, a simple pleasure that she shared alone each morning. I'm like... Watching the sunrise and masturbating. Masturbating. (laughs) She's still lonely. Um, I mean, she's prego. You know, you gotta get down there anyway. Yeah, that's true. That's true. (laughs) <laughs> its rays almost blinded her, distorting the trees and hills beyond, squinting. So she's burning her retinas. I'm like, <laughs> lady. Squinting against its brightness, she returned to the job at hand, first glancing absently up the high road. I'm like, also, like, I got to get back to dust in my front porch. Like, what? <laughs> her heart seemed to stop. Gripped as if by a strong hand, the broom quivered in her grasp. Quivering. (laughs) Far down the road came a white horse, Uh. its rider sitting straight and tall. He He seemed to be coming straight out of the sun. The horse quickened its pace as it neared the castle, sensing the excitement of its master. Her heart began to beat again, now loud and in rhythm to turning a page to the pounding hooves. He reined his mount to a stop outside the castle's front gate. This gets me. She could not make out his features. She didn't know if he looked good. But his stance spoke of honor and character because good posture tells you about people's morals. Yeah. 100%. (laughs) Also classist. Also Mm -hmm. classist. Probably because he never had to bend over and do real work. He never had to pick something up, guys. No. He He spent half the morning learning posture training and the other half learning how to eat the right silverware and speak properly. There you go. Eating the silverware. He didn't have to dust his front (laughs) porch. with the right silverware. Yeah, he had no porch dusting to do. No, (laughs) he did not. This man of privilege just rolls up the castle. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, what is this idea that you can gain pulse on someone's character from looking at them across the room that's not it but he knocked on the front door her front door not that long ago <laughs> okay S- still should be her front door it's her dad's which house. this is an interesting metaphor because her current man came in through the back door Ooh. and so he was coming in so that is that the wrong way around but stuff yeah, it's butt stuff. Okay. Obviously, <laughs> obviously referring to butt stuff. Um, no, but it's that meta- that dichotomy of, oh, he came in through the back door mm-hmm. insidiously, mm-hmm. whereas this man of honor is knocking on the front door. But in the story, I'm like, it's not insidious. He's just working class. He's a delivery person. He's giving a delivery. Doing his job. I'm like, this guy didn't bring you shit. He just came on a nice white horse. Yeah. With good posture. With good posture. My gosh. No flowers are mentioned. Our men just- <laughs> Anyway, so uh, la, la, la. he knocked on the front door, her front door, not that long ago. Obviously, should still be her front door. Like, it's her dad's house. Like, what the yeah. hell? It seems like she's kind of She should be going over. Excommunicated, but That's yeah. true. I'm like, she should be going over for Taco Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. The king stepped out to greet him, and she watched as they conversed. Watched as the king spoke with his hands and then pointed towards the village. Involuntarily, she took a step back into the shadow of the porch. 
The noble prince listened carefully, his strong shoulders sagging in disappointment and sadness. Shaking the king's hand and receiving from him a consoling hug, he mounted his horse. He looked towards the village. Oh, wait, nope, messed that up. He looked towards her village home, his eyes finding her in the shadow. Oh. For a moment, they both stared. Then, pointing his mount back towards the sun, he rode away into its brightness. She felt the hot tears on her arms and hands long before it occurred to her she was crying. Nothing she thought will ever be the same. The end. The end? The (laughs) end! That's the end of the story! Oh my gosh. Kelly's looking. She's fact checking me. What does this freaking epilogue say? Um... It's also, like, did anyone else think that when it said the king extended something to the man that it was going to be money and not his hand? Because <laughs> I thought he was going to pay him oh, no, to no. be like, because, I mean, his daughter is property. Obviously. So he's like, well, since you didn't I'll get the property, I promise you, I'll give you money Or instead. I'll give you money back because yeah. maybe you bought her. Maybe he paid for her. Uh-huh. Gross. All right, we have to read this epilogue. <laughs> this will be a surprise for you, too. Surprise. I read the first half of the first sentence, and I'm like, we got to know what this says. <laughs> I left the ghetto apartment, not knowing whether I had helped or not. Teenagers have a way of leaving you wondering. A few week, or sorry, a week later, Lydia found me outside the church on a Sunday morning. Her old smile was back. Thanks, Brother Jerry, she said as she pushed a note into my hand and then walked away. After I found my seat in the church auditorium, I unfolded the paper and read with joy the simple message it contained. Brother Jerry. I've decided to stay in the castle. Lydia. Six years later, I receive an invitation in my mailbox. My wife and I now live in a small town that in no way resembles Chicago. I'm into the third year of my first pastorate. I break the seal to find that we are being invited to a wedding. It seems Lydia has met a young man in Bible college. It seems he is planning on being a missionary to Mexico. It seems that they are deeply in love. It seems perfect. And it seems it was wise to stay in the castle. Uh, so is that the person this is based on? Is that the true story that we're talking about? Little Lydia? I guess Lydia so. in her ghetto apartment? She decided to break up with her ghetto boyfriend and wait for... So this is interesting uh, for me. Because I grew up in a neighborhood that some might consider, quote unquote, ghetto Mm. right we were the only white family uh, like for blocks like i grew up around a lot of african-american families a lot of latino families a lot of asian families and i always had this distinct impression from my white community like don't get a ghetto boy like don't get a hood boy and I think it was some of those things that took me so long. It took me a year, guys. I was best friends with James, hanging out like every day for a year to finally admit, I think I like you. I would like to date. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think a lot of this subconscious messaging has really affected, like really affected our earlier relationship. And it was because I was like, well, if I marry a quote unquote delivery boy, Right. Mm. That like and he might treat me nice at first. Mm. But will he actually take care of me? Will he actually be the good, quote unquote, Christian husband I need? And I had to get over all that shit and just realize, Kelly, you have a good relationship with this person. You like this person. He's going to actually take care of you. And he has. And this idea that a husband, a man, might turn on you mm. as soon as you give him what he wants just sets women up to think that they're going to be preyed upon. Yeah. Well, and it sets men up to prey upon women. A hundred percent. Right? Like, yeah. if, that's the narrative that we're, if that's the narrative we're feeding women and men mm-hmm. about what men want and what women can't give them. hmm yeah. Then men think that's the goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why are we surprised? Yep. And so this story is literally designed to freak women out mm-hmm. to basically like just wait. Mm-hmm. Like don't don't date, don't court. You're just magically gonna have someone ride in on a right a white horse and you're gonna know. 
That's my point. You're going to see his stature in the far distance and tell that he's a man of character. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And your father shakes his hand and you know, that is the man I've been waiting for all this time that has been prepared for me and I for him. That's like... That's, that's such bullshit. Yeah. Such bullshit. That's, not how the, that's not how life works. That's not how relationships work. Mm-hmm. That's just not how it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, the logical conclusion to this is my my dad must give me an arranged marriage yeah. in order for me to be happy. Like, that is the logical conclusion. But then also if you think of it as if God is the king, yeah. mm-hmm. then you're supposed to receive some man that god has brought to you yeah and like, how do you know how how do you know mm-hmm. how do you know unless he's on a white horse because it, it seems like him loving you and doting on you and treating you like royalty and showing you around and showing you a good time are not good indicators of a husband nope yeah he's so a liar. someone because yeah. that's the thing it just says that she's the happiest she's been in her life yeah, yeah. that she's having a great time yeah. that she loves this man of like of course She's going to want to marry him. Mm -hmm. And also, like, sure, this could happen, I will say. Sure. You could wind up in an awful marriage and someone who's been manipulative. 100%. Someone who has acted one way and then they flip a switch to something else. But that is not the norm. Mm -hmm. And that is not necessarily what's going to happen. Well, and that (laughs) – there is no saying that this – prince with st- a stature of character yeah it has any less chance of ending up like that yep like, like, there's no indication that he's any better besides his impeccable posture <laughs> <laughs> just really <laughs> solid besides the fact that like this theoretical dad figure has arranged it and knows mm-hmm. and picked him out what 20 years ago yeah. when he was a baby and so it's yep. like yeah that's the thing it's it's just like there's no it's no wonder to me that our generation, the singles of our generation, have so much anxiety about dating and about going out with anybody mm-hmm. within the church because we make the stakes so high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always like I remember the the slogan was that you're dating with the intention of marriage, yeah. right? So you don't date someone if you can't see that you're self-marrying them yes. right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And like you don't uh, like – even engage. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> you... I tell you what, I did not think I was going to marry my husband when we first started talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was not a thing. That was not on my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, we are friends. He's way too old for me. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But that's something that I find myself still thinking at times where it's like, oh, this person, I don't think that I could see anything long term with them. So I just not, you know, mm-hmm. but like you're writing people off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not even getting the chance to know them mm-hmm. because you can't see the long term. And so, like, that's – you're 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 limiting yourself. Yep. Which, and, like, also maybe you can, like, go sneak out the back door with the delivery boy and have a good time down in the village and then that's say – That's fine. Bye. See you soon. Delivery boy. Thanks, yeah. yeah. And then you just say goodbye. Like, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I think it also, like, demonizes fun. It's like somehow fun is corrupting. Mm -hmm. Like fun is going to veer you away from your destiny. Mm -hmm. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like that is to me so dramatic and like (laughs) off kilter. And it also paints a negative light that she got married and a year later she's pregnant. Yeah. And she's about to have a baby. (laughs) And I'm like, no, no, that's great. Uh Good job. Mm -hmm. Like you're creating a life. Yeah. Like – I don't know. Also, this is my take on it. Abusive dad excommunicates his daughter when she marries the person he doesn't want her to. Mm -hmm. She, though from a lot of wealth, ends up living a very poor lifestyle with someone that she loves very much. They get pregnant. They're about to have a baby. One morning she wakes up and he's still a little half drunk because he went out with his friends and got a little drunk and to celebrate to celebrate the fact that he's going to be a dad really soon and he's yeah. not going to have opportunities like this soon. She, because she's not controlling and crazy about him, allowed him to do so and loves him still very much. She wakes up the next morning and she's like, I'm going to do a little chores for him before he wakes up. Mm-hmm. And then he gets up and he does the rest of them. <laughs> she has a baby. They live happily ever after with lots of arguments and struggles in between. As and every she realizes, couple does. Wow. My asshole rich dad 
Wasn't worth the time anyways. Yep. <laughs> the end. That's the Kelly's end. version. <laughs> I like Kelly's version. <laughs> stay in the castle, the Kelly edition. <laughs> no, leave the leave castle. Leave the castle. Leave the castle. <laughs> Don't stay in the castle. Don't stay but in the like, castle. By Kelly Werner. But like maintain access to the castle if you can, but don't stay. Don't stay. Yeah. 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 It's really messed up to me that the dad cuts her off like that. What's because, it? like, it, he's essentially inflicting more pain onto her mm-hmm. for no reason. Yeah. yeah he's he's like, essentially forcing her to choose. Yeah. It's like, it's my way. It's very controlling. Or your way. Yeah. And there's no in between. There's no exactly. compromise, yeah. which means, to me, there's not real relationship. And that's not real loving your child. No. no. And that's the part that bothers me the most is... Everything this father figure does is painted with this idea of him loving her. He's so He's good. like, well, I will never stop loving you. But it's like, you did. Yeah. Though. You're not yes. doing anything. You are like, actions speak louder than Ex- words, Grandpa. Yeah. yeah. Okay? So. Yeah. It's like, if you, you, are you going to meet your grandchild? Yeah. I was like. Yeah. I was like, is loving your daughter never talking to her again, but putting flowers outside the window pane so she knows you lo-? Like, that's not love. Yeah. Sending her a message filled with just... All kinds of things of like, look, you could have been in here, but now you're out there. That's called Sorry. Yeah. manipulation. Yeah. yeah. And her looking up at this prince and being like, wow, that could have been my life. Yeah, it could have been your life because you probably feel horrible about the fact that about the way that your family treated you yeah. when you made a different and decision. And now you live poor in the village. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, newsflash, most people live poor in the village. Most, we're all like, out here poor what in the village. What are you talking okay? about? Like, yeah. But at least we can have a good time. Yeah. Boo. Boo. <laughs> I mean, 10 out of 10, no. 10 mm-hmm. out of 10, do not recommend Stay in the Castle or any of the other books that have the same exact cover. There's many, guys. There's a lot. Who are you? Yeah. How, can, how come you were the expert on this shit? Huh? He was in an apartment in the ghetto with Lydia. Oh, no. <laughs> not the ghetto. Yeah. He risked his life. Going into the ghetto for the sake of a poor girl oh who needed God. to hear that she, there was something else out she there. She needed for to stay her. in the castle. Who left him a note saying, yes. I stayed in the castle. What the Ooh. hell? She, no, that actually was an interesting point, too, that he said there is like, oh, she sent him this wedding invitation. I remember sitting in, and I, I do not want to talk trash about this pastor because she's at the time, very influential in my life, and I loved her, but, like, she wasn't, like, my youth pastor was an abstinence mm-hmm. only speaker, and mm-hmm. so she would go around to schools and promote abstinence in schools, mm. and I remember sitting in on one of her presentations one time, and she was basically bragging about this other couple that she had, like, pastored up, and how they were getting married now and having a honeymoon somewhere in Malaysia, and she was basically, like, do you want, or not, I don't remember where they're having honeymoon, but she's like, do you want this guy's life or do you want, and then she points at like STD person. She's like, do you want to end up like them? Abstinence. And that's like, that's the narrative. Oh my God. That's fear mongering. It yeah. is. It is like, you, you should be scared. You could wait. That's like sex. the mean girl scene. Yes. Have sex, get an STD and die. Yes. That's the- <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh gosh. No, no, no. Plenty of people have sex and don't get STDs. Yeah. Just because you're having sex doesn't mean you're being stupid. How much do you actually believe that that couple that she successfully pastored up actually didn't have sex before marriage? Or like... Oh, I believe it. You believe it? I believe it, but I bet they had a hard time. Oh, yeah. Lots of dry humping. (laughs) I'm like... No, not a hard time waiting. I bet they had a hard time trying after they got married. Uh, Oh. I bet they went through... Some rough patches because I have currently not met any female mm-hmm. <laughs> who waited until marriage without like super extreme, like limiting, mm-hmm. I don't know, strategies in place who then didn't get married and have issues. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's not how female sexuality works. I mean, thankfully, though, she had spent a lot of time masturbating. So yeah. she was set She's good up. to go. She's good to go. <laughs> She knew exactly what to tell him to do. Yeah. Also, the pregnancy thing. You brought that up and it was like weird, but that is, that is the other fear-mongering tactic, which is like if you have sex, you will get pregnant. Yeah. yeah. And then when you get pregnant, you are then stuck which yeah. with this person. Which carries over after you're married. Like I remember for the first three years of our relationship, I was 
terrified of getting pregnant. Like, and I had no reason to be, none whatsoever. I was on the pill and I never missed a day. Like in the like three years I was on the pill, not once. Yeah. And I kept, I still do, but I don't use them anymore. But I kept pregnancy tests on hand because if my period was a day late, I was terrified and I would take a test. And I'm like, this idea that if you get pregnant, your life is over is yeah. just like so untrue. Yeah. And it's like, oh, watch out. If you marry the wrong man and then you get pregnant with him, you will be trapped in that marriage even mm -hmm. more because your children will be raised in this abusive relationship. It's like, how about this? How about that? How about we just don't do that? Yeah. yeah. How about if you're in an abusive relationship and you have children with him, you can just leave? Yeah. 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 But that's the thing because you can't get divorced. Nope. No, it's not no, allowed. No, no, no. How about you can? No, no, no. No, no. That's not God's will. It doesn't matter how unhappy or abused you are. You can't do it. You think it's bad in this little small house at the edge of the village? Well, you'd be in the gutter if you divorced. Yeah. So. That is true in some cases. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. Oh, gosh. I also want to say this concept that maybe things will get better when a baby is born. And this is a concept I have observed in the Christian community mm -hmm. quite a bit. And that it's maybe the kid will make your spouse be better or make your marriage a little better or make whatever situation better. I'm like, no, 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 no. Obviously, I don't have kids yet. But what I have observed time and time again is that kids are help reveal problems they don't help cover them up yeah and this idea of like well we'll just have another baby i'm like that's not it and i don't think that they're necessarily trying to preach that mm. but like her internal narrative of like oh well the baby might help the arguing and i'm like Listen, you're newlyweds. You're already having a baby. That's pressure. Like, you just need to talk it out, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I do wonder if he meant that statement as, like, truth in mm -hmm. terms of he's like, well, if you have kids, because I think I've heard Christian reporting of this. It's like, oh, well, if you have kids, it will help things. Mm -hmm. um, genuinely, mm -hmm. people will think that. Yeah. Um, and then I've also heard... The, on the other side, the the idea of, oh, well, if I get him to have a kid with me, then he'll love me more. And mm -hmm. that's like the – that's the toxic – well, they're both toxic. But yeah. that's the side of like, oh, it like I, I wonder if he means it in the way of like she is misled in thinking that mm -hmm. or if he means it in the sense of this actually will help. Children are a blessing. Mm -hmm. Children are what marriage is meant for. Mm -hmm. Therefore, once you have children – you're going it's going to help this yeah. awful situation You've fulfilled that you're the in. purpose of yeah. marriage. I think it's gotta be the former, not the latter. Like you do. I've never I'm heard just curious. Never ever heard a pastor be like, have children, it will help your marriage. I'm like oh, that's never I have. been told really? to me. I have too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 It's the idea of like, well, it's like, oh, the reason your marriage isn't working out as well is because you haven't fulfilled the purpose of your marriage. Yeah, you haven't you to haven't have reproduced. Children. Oh my and God. that be will fix things because then you'll be a family unit yeah. as opposed to just two people. And you're not a family unit yet oh unless God. you've had That's gross. a baby. Yeah. yeah. There's like levels to it, right? Sure. Yeah. You are the most successful marriage when you have children. But probably not just one child. Like you need probably like two or three. At least. Yeah. Because children are a blessing. Such a blessing. They are. So, yeah. But it's – it. so I'm just curious which way he's thinking of that. Mm -hmm. And because my first instinct is that idea of like, oh, she's thinking this is just going to fix things and like he's showing how misled she is. But then I was also like, maybe he's not. He I'm not, not sure. Be. But I think his whole point is that, oh, this girl is misled because she didn't listen to her father. Mm -hmm. And now look where she ended up, like yeah. being poor and married to someone that you might argue with sometimes and sometimes yeah. might be a little drunk is a bad thing and that yeah. you've fallen from grace. I'm like, no, that sounds like life to me. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and I actually want to live in the real world. Right. Yeah. Because the unrealistic expectations world. that are continually set by purity culture is this sort of fantasy marriage where – your sex life is going to be better. Your relational conversations will be better. Like, he's going to treat you better because mm -hmm. you made him wait. Like, mm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 
And um, it's actually a false fantasy and it's not true at all. Yeah. Also, we haven't even addressed the fact that like she has to wait around for the guy to come to her and she doesn't get the opportunity to go to him. Mm-mm. Yeah. Right. So she is told that she is just at his mercy mm-hmm. of when he decides that she he's ready. She just has to suck it up and be lonely. She had decided she was ready long before that. Why didn't the king send her to go find her person? Mm -hmm. Like, why didn't he say, oh, you seem ready for this. Mm -hmm. Go forth, my daughter. (laughs) Yeah. Go be strong and independent and get your man. Sure. And I think that's just like a continuation of like the Christian teaching that like God's timing, which I don't even know if it's biblical, but like God's timing trumps your timing. You don't have agency in in the out, the like the direction that your life takes yeah yeah i mean i think that's false yeah yeah makes and like also if you're going to talk about the bible <laughs> like there's actually n- nothing in the bible that says that god picks your spouse for you also no. yeah let's read ruth <laughs> very different story like, yeah. yes and very different story l- those are the stories of marriage that are like actually pretty much every story of marriage that's highlighted in the bible is fraught yep. in some way Like, there are issues. Mm -hmm. There is adultery. There are multiple spouses. Murder. (laughs) There is murder. There um, are widows. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of things that happen. Rapists. Rapists, for sure. And that is normal life. The Bible is actually illustrating more of what normal life was at that time. Which is brutal. Yes. (laughs) And so the idea that, like, this is the way that it works is ridiculous. Well, ladies, thank you for listening to this dumpster fire, oh. purity culture, propaganda trash. Mm-hmm. Well, you're welcome, Kelly. Thank you for enlightening us. Yeah. You know, now I know I need to stay in the castle. <gasps> Isn't it so good? Emma, I'm so glad. Know. We're just here to encourage you to stay <laughs> to in the castle. To stay in the castle. Could you lay hands on me and pray for me in my loneliness? <laughs> As you stare out the window, As I onto, the, out the window. <laughs> onto the worldly simple villages. Yes. Oh, yes. Stay away from Thank those. you, Kellyanne, for giving me this privilege <laughs> of learning about what I need to do to remain in the castle. You know what? And be a princess. Emma, it is my absolute pleasure as a princess that also stayed in the castle. Mm. No, that's not Good true. Job. I went with the delivery boy. I was like, get out of here. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, well, this was a fun time, guys. Maybe this, I don't know, if we find any other this horrible could be a thing. books, this could be a thing, People maybe. People should recommend, well, first of all, I'm so curious to hear who's read Stay in the Castle. Yeah. Have yes. you been traumatized by this? Because I know it's like a more fringe, sort of obscure book, but I'm sure mm-hmm. there's got to be a community out there of people who are like, that was me. Yes. Mm-hmm. But also it would be so fun to hear from people who have other purity culture nonsense that they read that we could, or, or not even purity culture, but just like religious propaganda nonsense. Mm-hmm. So we can even open that up that we should definitely read and review because we're here for it. We're yeah. absolutely here for it. It's lots of fun to poke holes in. It really is. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> no. It's not hard. So, um, well, yeah. Thanks for listening today. I hope you had a good time and enjoyed it. Again, this was a little different, but I had a good time. I had a great so, time. Just remember, woman beings, make sure you are following us on Instagram and TikTok and you're giving us a review because it really helps us out. We're on podcast platforms all over. And don't forget to stay in the castle and we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Go masturbate out a window. <laughs> <laughs>